Hello and welcome back. Um, this tutorial is going to cover bowing and rosining the bow and angles and all that silly little technique stuff uh, that only seems silly and boring in the very beginning. Uh, later on, you'll come to depend on it. Um, so this is the bow. It's uh, kept loose. This white part here, this is made of lots and lots of uh, horse hair from tails and manes and things of that nature. Um, the reason being that if you looked at it in a microscope, there's all these little um, barbs on it sticking out from it. And that's what actually is plucking the string as you're drawing the bow across the string. Um, this little nut right here at the bottom, this little round part, this turns like a screw and you'll want to tighten it. And it takes a little getting used to to know just how tight. You don't want to over tighten it. But then when you have the bow and you're going to hold it, well, you're going to try. You'll probably find a hold that's comfortable for you. Different people uh, have recommended different ones. Um, I've been going with this one where the first finger is just up above this black part. And then the next two fingers, this one and the thumb, are pinching right underneath of that. And uh, the pinky goes over here to be like a counterweight, counterbalance kind of thing, so that as you raise and lower the bow up and down, closer to the strings, farther from the strings. Um, so anyway, you tighten this. You don't ever leave it tight. It's only tight when you're playing. When you're done practicing, untighten it. Make it loose again before you put it away. Otherwise, you're going to wind up getting a crack through here and it'll split and break and then you have to buy a whole new bow because there's no way of fixing something like that. It's a pressure tension point. So when you're putting the rosin on the bow, this is rosin. It's just tree sap. It's pretty cheap. You can get expensive stuff, but there's not really a need to, especially at this point in the game. Um, you lay the white part, the hairs on the rosin, and you draw the bow back and forth, kind of pushing down. Now here, the hairs are actually touching the wooden spine of the bow. So that tells me that I don't quite have this tight enough. And that's much better. It should stay uh, about as far away from it to be able to maybe slip a pencil through there or close to it. And that's putting the rosin on the bow. I'm going to pause this now because my dog is being annoying. Okay, so that's the bow. That's putting rosin on the bow. That's a fairly easy thing. Now, the next fairly easy thing that just really sounds a lot easier than it is has to do with the angle of the bow on the string. Um, it needs to stay 90 degree angle to the string, or at least, you know, that's the goal. That's what we're aiming for. So we want it, and see, I don't have a mirror to compare to, but I can see on the webcam there, we don't want it at an angle like this. We don't want it at an angle like this. We also don't want it too close to the bridge like this, and we don't want it too close to the fingerboard like that. We want it right about in between. That's a sweet spot and you try to keep try to keep the angle straight. Now um, that's a real tricky thing. It's very hard to do in the beginning. Um, it's very helpful if you've got either a mirror that you can play in front of or a webcam. I personally like really using the webcam. I'll play the same piece over and over again and record it and then I can watch it even watching it with the sound off to analyze the angles, um, kind of picking apart the performance and finding where I'm going wrong and trying to improve. Uh, so that's always something that's uh, helpful and useful these days that wasn't around back in the early days. <laughs> um, now, in addition to keeping it straight and keeping it in the right place, there's a matter of pressure. As you get... Um, closer up here to this end of the bow, which is called the frog. As you're going up and you're at this end, you don't have very much pressure on the strings at all. You want to be just kind of, um, just kind of lightly. 
but as you get down towards the end, you're increasing your pressure. And that's one of the reasons why the pinky finger is good, because you're increasing... See, and you can see my angles going all off. We all need work. But listen to how nice and clear and beautiful that sounds when the angle is just right. Um, so that's the sound you're going for. You're not going to get that sound a lot in the beginning. That's okay. Um, one of the other things to do as you're practicing and getting started on uh, learning this wonderful adventure in violin and or fiddle is uh, the different levels of the strings. The G string See, they're arced around the bow or around the bridge, and the G string is this lowest one here. So that's going to be like the basement. But you come up, you rock just like an elevator, bring your hand up. And that's another place where you wind up getting your angle off is when you're switching from one string to another. So you keep an eye on that. And you've got four strings to do that with. Now, uh, it gets a, lot, a little boring maybe going back and forth note to note like that. Just open strings, uh, one to the other. And at this point, what you're trying to do is get used to where each of them are and uh, how your arm needs to move in order to do that. Um, trying to see if I can, let me adjust this just a little bit. Okay, this might be a little bit better of a view. Um, You can go back and forth on each of those. The arm, when it's up here at the frog, makes a little triangle. You see that? How the, the wrist is tilted funny to get the bow to stay straight at that angle. But the, uh, well, I guess you can't because of the shirt I'm wearing. But the arm makes two sides of the triangle and the violin makes the other side. But when you get down to the middle of the bow, it's a square. See that square, the bow and the fiddle make two sides and the arm makes the other two sides. And then when you're way out here at the end, it's another triangle, but it's a great big open one. And I'm going to raise up so you can see that's the angle of the wrist down there at the end, as opposed to the angle of the wrist up here at the frog. And going back and forth between those two angles as you go, that's one of the tricky things that you're going to be learning and practicing. Um, just like playing a video game on the Xbox or something, the more you do it, the more your fingers are going to know and understand what to do without you even needing to think about it. But in the very beginning, there's a learning curve, and you're going to stumble, and it's going to get a little frustrating, but uh, it's well worth sticking through it. Um, and I believe that's all that needs to be said on this particular uh, beginner's tutorial all about uh, bowing and angles and pressure and so on and so forth. Um, have fun playing. <laughs>